Today I've got an interesting battery here for my Starlink Mini. This is the Peakdu Link Power 1. This will just slide right into the mini dish. I'll show you that in a second. It does have these quarter inch um, threads for a tripod. Now a tripod doesn't come standard with it, but you can get one from them or you can just use your own. Uh, you know, everyone has tripods it seems these days. So let me show you one thing here. The DC power plug, it comes with a sticker over it that says absolutely do not try to charge that from that because you will damage it. And it comes with that little DC plug. Now, before you clip this in, I would recommend plugging this into the mini because it makes it a whole lot easier. It's very hard to do it without it done, if not impossible. You do charge it through the USB-C port, which is right here. And then it has this nice LCD screen, which will give you information about the battery. It'll tell you like the draw, um, it'll tell you the percentage, it'll tell you, you know, the input, the output, everything. Now this can do pass through charging, so you can be charging this while you're using it. Now this does have a 27,500 milliamp hour battery, that's about 99 watt hours. So realistically you'll get about four hours of use out of this. And like I said, if you just plug this in first, Make sure it's in there snug and then we're just going to slide that right in there and that's it i do have it on and we're just going to orient my dish let me reference my gen 3 real fast so we get optimal signal okay so we're just going to use my grill here let's do it like this there we go we won't be able to see that screen but once it's connected i will try to find a better way to do that let's see well here i'll just show you right now i don't know how well you can see that but we are drawing 29 watts, 30 watts. That'll probably drop down to about 22 to 24 in my experience once it gets connected and everything. The screen does turn off pretty quick too. It's telling me right now at the current draw, I have three hours and 10 minutes remaining. Here, we'll just do this. Come on, focus. So we have three hours, eight minutes remaining. It's pulling 30 watts. Again, in my experience, my mini likes to pull about 22 to 24, sometimes 28 watts after it's connected. So, you know, even still, I have three hours at this draw. Realistically, I'm gonna get closer to four, which for how small the battery is and everything uh, is pretty great. This would be fine if you just needed to pop it out while you're hiking, use your internet, you know, turn it off, put it back in your backpack. Or if you're camping, you know, you pop it out in the morning, turn it on, you're going to go hiking for the day. You just go ahead and let it charge back up, come back to camp. You got your internet. Let's get this in a uh, optimal position here. We have that in a somewhat optimal position to let it connect. The roof's a little bit in the way, but we should still get a decent connection. Um, I've said it here before. We will come back and I will show you the app now. Ugh, let me show you real fast. There's a QR code here. It is not an app that you download. It is a web app. So scan that and it opens the uh, web page for it. Now let me let this get connected. It's probably gonna have an update and then we'll be back. Actually, while it uh, gets a good connection and stuff, see here's the web app. I've scanned the QR code, so we're gonna click connect to a device. Uh, Chrome needs permission. So we'll update the permissions, allow. And there it is, Link Power One. Come right up. Came right up. We'll pair it. It's the first time I've done this. Uh, tap to pair, pair and connect. Yes. I gave it access to everything. It probably doesn't need that, but. Ah, so it wants a pin. Is there a pin on the back? There is not. I went to their website and found the manual and it claims that the pin is 020555. So we will try that real fast. Okay. It would help if I could read. It claims that when you try to connect to the Bluetooth, a pin will be displayed on the screen. So let's try this again here. Link power one, pair. There, the screen turned off. Oh, whatever. <laughs> so it did take the 020555, it just, you're whatever. <laughs> Uh, technology, right guys? So here you go, little web app. Now you could add that to your home screen on Android. I'm not sure how to do that on iOS, but yeah. I mean, you can even set it to a schedule. So it'll turn off. Pretty cool. And see, like I said, uh, the power's come down considerably now that it has acquired satellites. So 
Let's go into the Starlink app real fast. And we are connected to it. It is doing a software update right now. And it's only pulling, you know, 21, 22 watts. Let's switch back to the app real fast here. And you can see, yeah, about 23 watts. I really like that web app. It'd be nice if it was a standalone app, but this is also cool because then any device can just pop right on there. That's actually pretty nifty. Actually, I think I like that more than a standalone app. Yeah, see, we're getting 4.4 hours. Realistically, like I said, probably about four hours in my experience. Um, I've used this a few times and right around four hours, give or take 15 minutes is about what I get. Cause see, yeah, now that it's not doing that update anymore, it has dropped. And let's go ahead and install that now. We will be back and we'll do a speed test on here. Actually, let's take a look at the power while well, it's, um, okay, so when it's rebooting and installing software, it actually drops considerably. Now you're not gonna get eight hours in the real world off this thing, but once it comes back on, four hours, yeah. That's pretty cool. And I can just like turn the DC port off. It has an expert mode. Let's turn that on. What did that add? Oh, so I can set power limits for input and output. I can restart it, I can shut it down. I can do an OTA. So I could update the form firmware if I wanted. It seems to be on the current though. Very cool. I like that little additional features there. Uh, it looks like we might be, might be back up and running. So let's switch to the Starlink app again. Let me reconnect to it. Yep, we're back online. And it'll do all its calculating stuff, but it hasn't moved, so the orientation should be fine. So I wanna do a speed test real fast. There was a global outage last night, I guess, for like 15 minutes. Uh, there was also a pretty good solar storm last night though, so not surprising. These are satellites in space, <laughs> pretty crazy. Yeah, so the capacity is not that great this morning. I mean, this is better than my mini when I got it, but I saw 400 the other day on here. Um, you know, the roof is partially blocking the sky, so that could be some of it. But this is crazy. We're getting 292 megabits per second down from a satellite powered by a battery sitting on my grill to my phone that has more computational power than even the computers when I was a kid. Like, even the supercomputers when I was a kid. <laughs> it's just freaking amazing. Uh, but yeah, I really like this battery. Uh, it clearly works. Let's switch back over here real fast to the app. And you can see, you know, we're pulling 23.3 watts. Just like I said, you know, 22 to 24. Pretty stinking cool. I like this little battery. I'm definitely gonna get some use out of this when we go like, uh, like day trips and stuff because I can charge it in the car when we're driving. I can also just throw this in the dashboard. I actually get about 100 megabits per second down with it in the dashboard. Pop it out when I need to use the internet in a dead zone when my phone's not working and then charge it back up or even have it just on pass through while we're using it. And then when I disconnect, you know, the power will drop. And yeah, I just, I like this thing. I'll have a link to this in the sticky comment in the description. Let me know if you've tried something like this or if you've tried one of these. Uh, I would love to hear your experiences. Anyway, see you guys in the next video.